What is going on, guys? Dogunner44 here today, back with another video, guys. Back with the first duck crossing episode, even though it's not the first duck crossing episode, but it actually is. But it's not also. Uh, today is the first episode where I'm collaborating with another Nintendo content creator. And that creator is Barry, known as Impact Game Station on YouTube, also known as IGS. Um, Barry, I've known for a while now, pretty much ever since I started my YouTube channel. So without further ado, we're going to be discussing Pokemon today. And of course, it branches off into many different things on Duck Crossing. So guys, without further ado, enjoy the podcast. Remember to leave a like and go follow Barry down below. All of his links are down below. So guys, enjoy the video. My name is Barry Dunn. I'm a YouTuber from Ireland, if you can't tell with the accent. I don't look Irish, but I am Irish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, my channel is called Impact Game Station, IGS. You may know me previously as Nintendo Impact Gaming. And I do, I guess, I my channel is heavily focused on indies, nindies content. Of course, Nintendo. I do PlayStation, Xbox, PC as well. Knowing that the three starters, we don't know their ever other evolutions. Who who do you pick? Well, you tell me who the uh, three starters are. So we have Grookey, which is the grass type. We have Score Bunny, which is the fire type, and then we have <laughs> Sobble, which is the water type. Personally, I'm I'm a big Grookey fan. I have to say. Well, I don't know. For me, like. It was always the fire type, like Charmander, you know, growing up, Pokemon Red, Pokemon Yellow, that kind of era. It was always Charmander, so I might have to go with fire in this case. Okay, I see, I've always been a water type guy, but for some reason, Grookey just is like the cutest looking little monkey. Like, and I, I, I don't know, sometimes I go with grass type, like Chikorita was one of my favorites back in the day. Okay. But, um, yeah, so which, are you going to be getting both games or just one? Well, Doc, actually, to be honest, I'm not going to get either of them. <laughs> uh, really? Seriously, yeah. <laughs> see, it Why is that? See, it's, it's come to a point where, like, Pokemon Let's Go, like, I wanted a remaster of Pokemon Red this year. So, you know, like, like, like I said, it was the first Pokemon game I ever played on the Game Boy, and I wanted a remaster, like, a, a HD remaster, and I'm so happy that it's on Switch, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. I yep. still haven't completed it yet, but I mean, I guess I'm busy too, too uh, you know, playing too many games, not complaining, right. but I just don't need to feel, I, I don't have to, you know, the need to get the new Pokemon game for some reason. Oh, huh. that's I'm, interesting. I'm pretty content like, with every, what I have. <laughs> every time a new Pokemon game comes out for me, I have to get it and I have to get both. <laughs> and I don't know what it is. Like I, I may never unwrap one of them, but I have to get them. Then how will you get well, to do, like uh, each Pokemon then? Because you have your Pokemon locked each game, don't you? Right. <laughs> so how will you get the other Pokemon? Well, that's that. Like usually, I just I don't know. For some reason, when when I play Pokemon, like I have my six guys, and like I'm good with my like I normally try to pick out my six guys before I get into the game. Yeah. That's just how I go about it. I'm like, okay, I want these Pokemon and these these ones. It's like, and sometimes I won't even evolve some of them because I like their other forms. Yeah, true. But see, for me, it's I find it's getting too confusing. Like, there's all these dark Pokemon, and it's just like there's too many evolutions. I find now, dude, it's so confusing. It is very. What confusing. is the Mega Evolution? What I don't even know what the Mega Evolution is anymore. <laughs> now they have the the Dynamax. I don't even know what that What's is. What's up with the Dynamax, dude? <laughs> <laughs> like it went from Mega Evolution now to Dynamax. Which is like these ridiculously massive Pokemon that are bigger than the whole map of the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what it looks like from the pre-release screenshots. Yeah, what was it like, Fat Pikachu or something? People were calling it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's just, I'm looking at them right now while we're talking. And I mean, like, some of these, they, they just look ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> Oh wait, there's another one that the Gigantamax, Gigantamax. There's Dynamax and Gigantamax. Wait, so is Gigantamax just even double the size, or like ten <laughs> times the size? <laughs> All I see is a Charizard. 
That's Gigantamax, and the height is 91 feet. Like, why? What's the need for this? <laughs> they have a Butterfree that's 55 feet, and well, Pikachu is 68 feet. I want to see a Snorlax or a Jigglypuff. <laughs> M- Meowth is 108 feet. Oh, God. <laughs> what size is Mewtwo, then? <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, can they all do this? Is that even physically possible in the Pokemon world? <laughs> so, have you looked at any of, like, the new Pokemon that are being released? No, I don't care about the new Pokemon. <laughs> 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 There's just too many. There's too many. Like, after the second or third gen, it just got, you know, too much. And I was like, oh, I just, I had a pass. Like, I, what was it, Pokemon Diamond that came out on the DS? I, I got that, you know, and... Diamond and Pearl was, was my favorite, hands down. Yeah. Yep. I got bored. Diamond and Pearl was know. just like the... Well, I, yeah, I could see I could do that. But, like, that's when I got into Pokemon. Oh, was okay. the Diamond yeah. and Pearl generation. Yeah. yeah. So, like, that's, like, that's my bread and butter right there, that mm-hmm. game. I thought Animal Crossing was your bread and butter. <laughs> oh, well, that's just, that's a whole other discussion. I know, of course, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and don't forget, Detective well, Pikachu, to what... too. <laughs> that movie was hilarious. Yeah. I didn't play the game on the 3DS, but the movie was funny. Oh, the game's pretty good, actually. It's not bad for what it is. And then we're getting uh, the second one on Switch, if I'm correct. <laughs> when's that coming out oh whenever the movie comes out i haven't a clue like well I- i'm presuming when the movie oh yeah comes we out. got it right here detective pikachu 2 yeah look at that dang thing that interested me when i was watching that some of the nintendo directs was uh the little pokemon camps that you can do i don't know if you saw that or not i think i've like, seen some of the bits yeah yeah like that that intrigued me because what that reminds me of is kind of like the tv show yeah and watching like the pokemon tv show like that's how i always wanted the game to be like kind of going around with a group of people like exploring through the pokemon world Mm. and i think if they did that like in a multiplayer way i think that'd be really cool interesting and like a gta pokemon in a way but not gta (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) (laughs) So here, is the new Pokemon game taking any mechanics from Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee? You know, I think that's what the Pokemon uh, camp thing kind of is, because you're right. petting the Pokemon, you're feeding yeah. them. So they're definitely taking that mechanic, and I'm hoping that you can have a Pokemon walk behind you. I haven't, I don't remember if I've seen that or not yet. Yeah. Because that was one of the mechanics I really liked in Let's Go uh, Eevee and Pikachu. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I, I liked that personally. And I don't know about you, but I was so happy when the random encounter, you know, on the grass was taken away. Oh, I loved that. No, no see, I absolutely years ago, loved it. Was, it. I, okay, like, it wasn't that bad. But I mean, like, I just got so annoyed after. It just, I got, I'm not going to curse on your show, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it just annoyed me so much. Like, when I heard about it, I was like, oh, thank God for that. Like, there's no disturbance. I did it. <laughs> What I, what I did like about Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee is seeing the Pokemon in, you know, the actual physical game and not just having them randomly pop up. And what was cool about that and what really grabbed my attention in that direction was the shiny hunting. Like, I've never been a shiny hunter, yeah. but for some reason, I was addicted to shiny hunting in the Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee series. Like, it was just fun. Mm. Yeah, do you have a... I actually got ready. Do you actually have a Mewtwo by any chance? And that's I go. don't. Do you want a Mewtwo? I, I don't. I can get you one. <laughs> Seriously, I can get you one. <laughs> really? Yeah. I haven't been on that game in a while now. Yeah. I kind of want to go back in, but I beat it and everything, and I was like, then I then after I beat it, I did shiny hunting, and then I was like, all right, moving on to the next thing. Didn't you buy the uh, Let's Go Pikachu EV Switch? I did, yes. Yeah, I did. You, you, you're nuts. The the <laughs> yeah that that was one of the coolest ones that came out with though so far. I think they actually yeah. like put a decent design on the back of the switch, which which is what want like made me want to get that one. 
But I have to say, I have to say, I did pre-order the Switch Lite that's coming out for Pokemon. Of course, I was just about the to ask you. The pink and the blue. The Nintendo Switch Lite. Yeah. Oh, there's I uh, think... there's two of them in the US, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. We have a uh, silver one here in Ireland, and it's coming to the UK as well. I'm not sure if it's all of Europe. I'm guessing so, but I don't know what way it works here. Like, but yeah, that's cool. That's that's cool. I uh, but I really like the idea of the Switch Lite because once it's perfect for Pokemon too. Oh yeah, like, big time. I feel like with Pokemon, it's like a definitely handheld Game Boy type of feel, and like the Switch Lite is definitely perfect for that. Yeah, well, I tell you, the biggest problem I guess I have with Pokemon now is why are they uh, like using like pretty much the same engine since the DS era, right? And 3DS, it's for me, it looks the same. Like, uh, let's go. Right. I, I think it was a big change. You know, I guess they've kind of improved visually on sword and shield but it looks pretty similar to you know previous installments it does especially when you get into like compared to like even the 3ds when they brought in you know like the 3d running around and everything where it's not like a grid type of gameplay yeah um they definitely brought that over into the switch as well with of course updated graphics um i definitely feel you on that because i feel like when they did bump up to that next step on the 3ds they didn't really make a huge increase on the switch no so i definitely agree on with that and why was there no 3d used in the 3ds versions like it was all too like there wasn't you can't even use the 3d slider if i'm correct right right i remember that <laughs> that's just i don't know is a game like it, but it, it was like a 3d crazy. 3d world without 3d yeah pretty much you know which is which is why I think they're focusing so much on the 2DS compared to the 3DS because like they came out with that flip up 2DS the 2DS XL yeah there's so many different names that that's a whole other topic too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for that one DS even though we have a DS. But... <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. But is there anything like else in the game that you're I know you're not too too fond of it, but anything else in the game that kind of jumped out at you when you were watching any of the directs? I guess, well, maybe location-wise, you know, considering it's well, it's close to me, it's set in right. the UK, if I'm correct. Yep. And, I don't know, it, it's just kind of cool that it's, well, close to home compared yeah. to, you know, other versions. Like, where the last one was set, was it in France or something? I can't remember exactly. I think so. I I'm not sure. Yeah. That's it. But yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, so it's kind of, uh, well, localish, you know, but unfortunately, there's no Pokemon outside that I can capture. But <laughs> Right. Now, something they kind of branched off from um, when Pokemon Sun and Moon came out, they didn't really have gym leaders anymore. Now we're back with gym leaders because I see on here gym leaders. Um, Which did you, did you play Sun and Moon at all? I, <laughs> that's the thing, I actually, I bought the two of them, so like, oh, you know, be interesting to, to uh, get, the, you know, collect them, like, I think it was my first proper 3DS Pokemon game, yeah. and I got, I honestly, I just had no time to play them, so I actually, I had to go right. of them. <laughs> yeah, know. so like, they didn't have gym leaders, they had these other I, I can't remember the name for some reason they were like it was some challenge thing like an island challenge or something and they definitely went there but they're, it looks like they're back at gym leaders and i wonder if they're gonna bring anything in that's similar to that to kind of break up the game a little bit yeah no but like it makes you wonder why take something away like if it wasn't broken in the right. first place Right, I totally agree with that, and that's why I think a lot of people didn't really like Sun and Moon. Yeah. Um, because of that, but it's good to see they're back on that. I think, and that's why I think Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee was a great gap filler. Because I feel like, you know, Sword and Shield wasn't ready at all to be released last year, and they needed something to fill that kind of gap and kind of bring you into what is going to be pokemon on the nintendo switch so i feel like and it was like kind of a perfect welcoming game in my opinion because it was like gen one basics of pokemon 
and just, you know, enjoying the team that you built in the game and seeing all the different evolutions of Pokemon. I don't know. I feel like it was a good, good gap filler for this game that's coming out. Yeah, I agree. Like, uh, I found that the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, the launch was massive. And it's it was the right step, I, I find that. Like, for getting people into Pokemon, you know, if it was first-time users, you know, like, people getting the Switch, it was big Christmas time, people buying Pokemon, you know, the, on the Switch. And, you know, go, like like you said, going back to Gen 1, you know, like, the nostalgia for older people like ourselves. Oh, definitely. You know, and... Definitely. I think they hit a home run with it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I totally agree. And I think that's going to bring more people into Sword and Shield because it's they're keeping a, I feel like they're keeping a lot of similarities which is good. The only thing that's not really similar is the the Dynamax and the gigantic <laughs> Pikachu that you have to watch out for. <laughs> watch your step. But uh... um did you use the Pokémon uh, Go Plus at all or Poke Pokéball Plus? Sorry, not Pokémon Go. Uh, I actually have the Pokéball and like the reason like you know like, if you bought the controller it came with uh, with Mew. Yep. And like I think it's it's interesting for I I don't know if you ever thought about this, but for maybe people who are maybe disabled in some way, you know, and like it's it's cool that you can use the the controller. You can play the game entirely with one hand. Right. And right. That's yeah, that's yeah. a cool way to think about it too, actually. Yeah. No, because there is a you know, like I'm going to a, a games event this weekend, and one of the guys that's going there, he is. Uh, disabled and uh, one of the youtubers like and yeah he asked me one of the days beforehand to bring up the pokeball so he could have a look and you know it's just interesting to see how he could maybe use the pokeball himself but yeah it's it's really cool the pokeball the fact that you, you know there's like there's motion on it you know the the there's a gyro yeah there's, there's gyro built into it like it's a yeah. actual controller you know the actual the middle of the pokeball is the analog stick which is really cool right Right, I I personally did use it, and I think it was weird at first playing Pokemon on like a big screen TV, but the actually interacting like when you're fighting a po like when you would go and try to catch a Pokemon and physically with your hand throw the Pokeball, I thought that was a really cool feature, and I'm glad they're bringing that into once again the new game coming out next week. Oh, was that being brought in? Oh, okay, that's it, I, it is because I see Pokemon Plus. Pokeball connectivity, so I mean, I'm sure sh- it's it's definite definitely has to work with the game. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't, you know, bring that over because it it did. I'm sure it's sold pretty well. Yeah, and I guess for I maybe for anyone interested, if you actually placed any Pokemon in that Pokeball, and and you know, like if you're going for a walk or something, maybe playing Pokemon Go, literally on the go, like. Your like the XP would build the more steps you take with it because it has a built-in pedometer and stuff. Right, right. And they had that what they had that back in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. That was yeah cool. the little Pokeball thing where you could transfer your Pokemon and then walk around with them. Yeah, that was cool. I remember that. So like the Pokeball. I remember being in. Then... Uh... Go on, sorry. I remember being in gym class and having uh, a Pokemon. Right, right, right by my side on my hip, and I knew it was gaining levels because I'd be running around the whole time. <laughs> Did people know about it in the school, in your class, like? Oh yeah, I had a we, I had a group of buddies that we were all into Pokemon. Oh nice. Um, so we would kind of all do it. Um, yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. That's cool. Now, like, do you remember using uh, the old uh, Game Boy? cables and stuff oh definitely yeah definitely i i didn't like use them back when i was because i was much younger when that like first came out but mm. um back when i was getting into pokemon like when i was getting into pearl and diamond i bought like all the older games to kind of learn the history of from, from where pokemon came from yeah so yeah i'm pretty familiar with all that yeah it was a cool concept like the like definitely. The, the old uh pokeball for the ds for anyone in, uh, listen right now it was like Tama- uh, tamagotchi you know yeah S. it was <laughs> and it was like you i still have those too those pokeballs yeah yeah 
That's cool. Have the full box and everything that the Heart Gold and Soul Silver, like you get that big thick box with the DS game in it and then the Pokeball. Did you actually ever uh, get Pokemon? Uh, is it Type Adventure? It's called Type no, Adventure. No, I didn't. No, no. It, it was basically it, it was a game for the the DS, and it came with a keyboard, a, a Bluetooth keyboard. Oh, really? Yeah, and like you actually had to type in the Pokemon's name on the screen as it came up. Oh wow! Yeah, I actually have the box and everything upstairs. And oh, re- cool. The reason why I actually I bought that game was for the keyboard. I have it well, uh, like a Bluetooth keyboard for my phone. Uh, like it, <laughs> it, it, it was cheaper at the time. But uh, that's th- funny. Yeah, and th- it's a Pokemon one, so it's a win-win. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you know. Did you ever? Did you ever have a Pokemon Mini? Pokemon Mini. Yeah. It's like a really, really tiny looking Game Boy. Oh, it was the Pikachu thing, wasn't it? Yeah. No, I yeah. never had one And it of them. came with little games, little Pokemon games. No. <laughs> they were like actual, like, not, they weren't like Game Boy cartridges, but they were like smaller versions of it. Yeah, yeah. No, I never had one of them. I, I have one them. of those. <laughs> have you showed it off on the channel yet? Um, it's cool to see how, like, what I'm, what I'm trying to get to here. It's cool to see how it's revolutionized. Like, we went from that all the way to like a physical Pokeball that actually interacts with the game. Yeah. Now, yeah. Do you uh, like what is exactly the next step you think for Pokemon? Ah, uh, that's a. That's a. I think VR. Yeah. I think Pokemon needs to be in VR, and I think Nintendo really needs to, or at least partner with another company like Oculus, which I, I is that are they the leader right now in VR? Because I don't really stay in on top of VR. Yeah, I, I think Oculus would be but, on top. Like there's HTC Vive. Uh, yeah, it's hard to tell. Like maybe oculus i think so are like the top you know the biggest name and uh, right, the biggest name at least yeah um what i think what i think would be cool is the movie that stands out to me is uh, ready player one and i think having a world or game like that in vr and they could tie it into pokemon in a way so it's actually more like a real life simulation kind of thing would be incredible and i know that's like way way down the road i don't think we're quite there um, but I think it would be cool to see something like that, like Nintendo team up with someone like Oculus to produce a game like that. Yeah. But see, but yeah, the... that's where, that's where I think it should go. Sorry. What were you saying? No, I agree. But the, the thing is with Nintendo, I'm sure, you know, their hardware at the moment that publicly isn't as powerful as like the likes of PS4 or the Xbox. Right. So Nintendo, like I don't know if they do this on purpose, like limit themselves themselves with hardware. So like, like look at the uh, the Labo, you know, VR Labo. Yep. It's not bad, but it's not that wonderful. Right. And Nintendo, why aren't they like utilizing it even better? Like, they, like for right. me, the best. Uh, well, for me, like I have here, VR experience is PSVR. It's fantastic. Right. Right. I yeah, I had that too, and that was. It's definitely a crazy experience. If you've never done VR before, it's it's really weird. Because, like, <laughs> it feels like you're running. It feels like you're looking around. So your body starts to sweat. And, like, it's just a very, very different experience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's... that's <laughs> like, at I times, think be... like, your body feels weird because you're not physically oh, moving. Oh, definitely. <laughs> right. You feel... And when you take that headset off... You're definitely, you feel very weird. Yeah. Oh, it's cool, though. <laughs> definitely. It's really cool. And I can't wait to see, like, where that technology goes. I know we're kind of branching off course here, but that's that's what that's what happens in Duck Crossing. We, we go off on the different courses. Yeah, we, we never stay on topic. <laughs> I, I think we're crossing, you know, to a new road, VR. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, we could cross into Animal Crossing. No, yeah. that's... That would be a full day discussion. <laughs> I hear. Talk about Don- Donkey Kong thing, Country. <laughs> well, I'm just going to say a quick little thing. What Nintendo has shown in Animal Crossing 
is probably about 10% of the game they're releasing next year. Yeah. The ha- like, the, like, there has to be so much more that's like not that's, showing up. That's just, that's just an island you can go to. That's not even your main town. Interesting. That's my thought. That whole uh, second like water I said, thing. that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's draw. Barry, <laughs> Barry, what I want you to do is I want you to give a good shout out to your channel right now because you work so hard on your channel, bro. I always see your content and you work so hard. So if there's anything you want to say about your channel to let the people that are watching this go and subscribe, definitely do that now. Sure, so do you. Work, uh, well, uh... I wonder if you work harder than me. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't know. I, everyone works, works hard. But yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. you, you, I always see you posting videos, man, I and am. I really respect that. Oh, uh, like, like as you know, like we're we're both one, you know, person YouTube channels, aren't we? Yep. Yeah, and it's it is so tough. But uh, yeah, guys, thanks for uh, tuning in. Um, yeah, if you don't know who I am, my name is Barry Dunn. I'm a YouTuber from Ireland if you can't tell with the accent i don't look irish but i am irish uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um my channel is called impact game station igs you may know me previously as nintendo impact gaming and i do i guess i my channel is heavily focused on indies and indies content of course nintendo i do playstation xbox pc as well and yeah so i don't know if you heard so maybe Duck will make an appearance. I do this thing called Impact Direct. It's like Nintendo Direct, but it focuses on all platforms. And maybe we'll get an appearance from Duckman himself. I'll be on there for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love supporting other creators, so I got to be there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, Barry, it was, it was really awesome actually being able to talk with you for once. Finally. Um, definitely <laughs> about Nintendo. Um, we should definitely do this again. Like I said, um, I actually made a video kind of introducing what Duck Crossing is going to be now. And I'm going to get, mo- like you guys, you're not just going to come on Duck Crossing once. You're going to come on multiple times. Maybe we'll get a group of us together sometime. But I think it's going to be a really fun thing to kind of collaborate with all the Nintendo YouTubers that are in this community. Hmm. Thanks again for having me on. appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. 